Hello guys, today we're going to be starting a new series called Gigarex's Myths and Legends. And to start off the series, we're going to be talking about the Basilisk and the Cockatrice. These creatures are two completely different creatures, but yet their origins are the same. And they are like each other almost completely, other than looks. First, we have the Basilisk, which everyone thinks is a giant, huge, scary snake monster or lizard thing with like six or eight different legs. I don't know, I've seen so many different things. But the actual origin of this creature is the fact that a serpent or toad egg gets incubated by a male uh, chicken, a rooster. And when that happens, apparently... A snake that has the ability of when you look into its eyes, it can kill you by paralyzing you or turning you into stone, whichever one you decide to believe. That's completely up to you. And then, let's mention this thing isn't some huge two, three story, 20 to 30 feet t foot tall snake like you see in Harry Potter. No, that is not the case whatsoever. This thing is actually only supposed to be 10 to 10 and a half inches. And personally, even though that's smaller than most snakes in the world, even a common gardener snake gets up to about two feet long, um, that's still pretty scary because don't you think out in the wild, at least in a regular place, you might be able to notice a giant anaconda a lot easier than a little gardener snake? I would think so, and the scary part about it is just the snake's abilities, and we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's go on to the cockatrice. The cockatrice is actually a roost, is actually what happens when you take a rooster's egg, yes, I said rooster's egg, a male chicken has to lay an egg in order for this to happen, and then a serpent and or toad ends up incubating it. So it's just the opposite of where the t toad or serpent egg is having to be incubated by the rooster, but this time, rooster egg incubated by toad or serpent. Yeah, so that one's going to be a little harder, but the, <laughs> that I'm a little bit more happier about. Mostly because this creature is supposedly supposed to be a lot bigger than the actual basilisk that we all know. <laughs> the... <laughs> The cockatrice is a large man size, or sometimes bigger, depending on the legends that you see and or hear. The thing is supposed to be a large man sized wyvern like esque creature with the head of a rooster, obviously. Now, the real dangerous part about this is the fact it's bigger, which means it's more likely to actually cause physical harm to you, whether, you're, whether you want to or not. At least with the basilisk. It'd probably be a lot easier to get away from that, other than the fact that it likes to apparently uh, lunge instead of slither. That is, well, that and all on its own is going to be a little bit scary as well, because I don't know if that would be faster or as fast or even slower than slithering as a snake. But we all can for surely know that the cockatrice would be able to run far faster than that because, well, have you seen Jurassic Park? Those things are supposed to catch up to like 70, 80 miles an hour. Now, the cockatrice and the basilisk, though they may be completely different looking creatures, in the sense they are the same exact thing, just different. And there's all sorts of creatures out there that are like this, but we'll get into that at a different time. Now, what we all have to realize is that these creatures have different abilities other than just the fact that they can just look into your eyes and then you become stunned or turned into stone with whatever type of visual poison that is. I have no clue. I don't want to even find out. You also have to take in consideration that the other abilities, for one, is the fact that if they so ever want to, they can breathe on you, and I'm going to call it an acidic acid, 
ends up burning your skin a little bit and then the poison gets into you and just like with staring into your eyes except it doesn't turn you to stone although in some legends it does t the liquid that they breathe out does just turn you plain into stone but i'm going to say it this doesn't and that it was meant to actually just completely paralyze and stop your heart just like if rattlesnake venom were to be injected into a mouse or something but instead of just injection, regular injection, the issue would actually be the fact that this is an acidic venom, which means it's going to burn the skin, and then it's going to get into your bloodstream right there, and voila, poisoned, <laughs> you're gone. And then, to make it worse, is the fact that the co the cockatrice is bigger. It doesn't even it doesn't even need that. But it's not just breath. I'm guessing it's also a type of spit as well. It, w it would make sense to me. But people could also be just confusing that with like a spitting cobra. Who knows? And then the last one that fears me most of all, scares me most of all, is the fact that it'd be very hard to get yourself to go up and kill one of these things, whether you think you could physically take it on or not. Because back in the medieval days when all this was an issue, supposedly, you couldn't go up to the creature and just hit it with a sword or a spear because your life would be at major risk indefinitely. Like, it just it, not just a major risk, you would be at risk in general because supposedly the venom is also around around their skin and is so active and strong that it could go up the spear so long as it made contact with the creature and the weapon is in contact with you like a lightning stream going up a metal rod or something and it goes up the weapon and gets you poisoned boom just this creature creatures, sorry, these creatures are probably the most intimidating and possibly dangerous creature out there, not due to their size or anything, but the potentness of their poison. Like, they can breathe on you, spit at you, they can look at your eyes while you look back at their eyes, of course, or if you're so unlucky to have touched it, with gloves, no gloves, or a weapon that you are physically touching and is physically touching at it at the same exact time, you're just screwed. There's no way around it. You would be dead. But luckily, in most nature, there is yin and yang. So, much like the mongoose to the co king cobra, we have the weasel to the basilisk and the co but it's not as simple as the weasel fighting these things because the weasel just lose in general the weasel has a discharge fluid called effluvium e-f-f-l-u-v-i-u-m effluvium whether i'm saying that correctly or not i don't really care because i'm not good at speech anyways as you've all been able to see so, effluvium is very toxic to the cockatrice and the basilisk. Uh, however, that also makes the weasel the only creature capable of actually killing the cockatrice or the basilisk. But, at the same time, it also means that it, it's gonna... <laughs> there is an end to the weasel as well. Sadly, poor weasel. But here's how it works. At least I'm guessing because the, the rumors and legends never went into specifics. But I'm guessing that what would happen is that they would find out where the basilisk or the cockatrices were, however the plurals would be. And that would be an easy way to find them because wherever they lead, walk, however they move they end up leaving a trail of death, like dead plants and stuff, because of all that poison. Like, that's how toxic it is. It kills everything around them. 
they find them and they just throw them into the hole where the weasel is. And the end, basically it seems like the cockatrice or the basilisk end up killing the weasel and then whenever that happens, just like a skunk uh, produces its smell whenever accidents happen with that thing, well, I'm guessing the same thing probably happens with the weasel. And therefore, that excrement, whatever you want to call it, the effluvium ends up killing the basilisk and the cockatrice. There's always that it's just not a happily ever after all the time. Not with all these creatures, no. I'm not going to try to make this sound enjoyable all the time with what these creatures are. I'm here to let you know that these creatures are good, bad, dangerous or not. That's what I'm going to be trying to supply to you. Hopefully you'll never have to encounter such creatures, or maybe you'll be lucky enough to encounter at least the good creatures. Who knows? Um, I will eventually probably be going in debt to the prehistoric creatures because of the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of different types of prehistoric creatures, whether they are quite, al quite alike with each other or not. I just want to keep bringing these stories out for you guys because who knows? Uh, scientists say we have about four to five, four to five more years until we start having dinosaurs back. We better get ready for the, for the prehistoric apocalypse, right? And maybe mythological creatures will come back as well, especially with all these mutations that keep, that we keep seeing around the world. Well, anyways, guys, I hope you liked this today, and I hope that. All of you have a wonderful giga day. If you liked this, please hit that like button. If you want to keep watching, hit the no notifications button and also subscribe. That helps me a lot. I'm hoping to see more of you guys coming in. Oh, also, if you so happen to want to have a creature of in your imagination, don't put something that's godlike. You could, but I can't promise I'm going to choose it or do it. But I am going to see maybe once a week or at least once a month, depending on how often people even do this. So once it does start, if you can subscribe your own creature, whether it's fake or you think it, you saw one one time, something out of your own imagination, something that's not part of the regular mythological creatures, something only you could actually think about, send it to me. And maybe we can draw some pictures up about it the best that you can or I can. And we'll put it up here with me. And we'll talk about it. And the mentions will go out to you. And that's about it. <laughs> I hope you all have a wonderful Giga Day. And please hit that like button. Bye.